Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, hello, everybody. Our sound is looking, sounding sound well. Looking so let's go ahead and mute that replay s stuff. Awesome. Okay, so first of all, you'll notice it's a new theme. Um, it's actually an older theme. Uh, by older, I mean several months, five, six months or so. Uh, it's one of my favorite themes. But uh, my players don't like it because it's hard for them to read, so I never use it. So I'm using it today. What we're doing is uh, something a little different. We're making... I have a scenario that I've run a couple times now to introduce players to Starfinder. Uh, Starfinder is my favorite role-playing game, and um, I like it. I love it. I want more of it. And so... I've created a scenario um, using uh, one that already exists for, for the most part. Um, and what I do is I have these pre-made characters. So the person comes in and they just pick from something that's there and we run it. Lasts about two hours, two, two and a half um, maybe three, uh, I, I tell them two and a half hours. Uh, and that way they get an, uh, an idea of what it, how what works, what doesn't, how to use, uh, what they like about Starfinder, what they don't. So I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun, and it's a good introduction to Starfinder. But in order to do that, you have to have the characters, the pre-made characters, ready for them to go. And that's what we're going to be doing today is making some pre-made characters um, so if you're curious about character creation for Starfinder, that is what we're going to be doing today. Um, so first of all, I want to make things bigger because especially with this theme, you can't read stuff like this. Uh, so we're going to right click in your chat menu. If you're ever going to change the scale UI interface, you want to use your interface. I'll bring that up a little bit. Click in the chat. Hit slashy slashy scale UI. I'm going to start with 100 and see. I'll go a little bit bigger than that. So you just press up on the up arrow to bring back what you just typed. I'm going to go 110. Boom. I don't think I've ever used 110 before. But that does give us a little bit more room. I actually think I'm going to go 115. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. All we're doing is just reading today. So, boom. All right, so here I have a note that I made, character creation note, that gives me an idea. I usually have this on my sticky note uh, on another monitor. Um, there we go, boom. Now, in my Discord, let's see. Was this one I'm looking for? Is it? Is it? Is it? It is not. All right, so let's see. Is it this one? Um, what I did was I pulled a bunch of images. Curious. I don't see them in any of these. I didn't delete them, did I? Hmm. All right, well, I don't know what happened to my images. Uh... I don't think it would be in my general file, would it? I pulled a bunch of images of the different races. Uh, I, since I now have like 140, 150 different races that you can pick from, uh, I just went through, picked some of the more dynamic, some of the more interesting looking races and posted them so that, because we were doing the same thing, we were looking at starting a new campaign. So I was like, hey, here's some of the most popular races or some of the more cool looking races that you'll bring. I don't like having large players in my campaign. I also don't like having tiny players in my campaign. All right, so it's not here. Um, that's just weird. I don't know what I did with them and why they wouldn't be still here. 
Uh, but okay. That's all right. We don't need it. Uh, let's start off with the quote for today. Anytime you're on my Twitch stream, you can type exclamation point quote and get a quote. All right, so let's take a look at what we have already. So we have Amika, Bomber, and Loki. Um, I don't know why they don't have to portraits, so let's go ahead and fix that. Oh, there we go. So she has a token. She doesn't have a portrait. Weird. All right. So first, of all, we also need to check our um, library to see what we have loaded. We want the core rule book, of course. We want the, all the alien archives. One, two, three. Okay. The upper character operations manual and the armory. All right, so that is good. Looks like we have everything. Let's make sure. I don't think I have in archives for, but let's check it out. So we go to our data, come down here to search by name, and we go alien. Two, three. Yep, that's all I have. Okay. All right, so back to our assets. I mean, let's uh, double click on the portrait. Go to data. Okay, I don't like this aspect that you can't see the titles. But um, here's our Amika. Bomber should be a Shoki, right? It's a halfling mercenary, okay? So halfling is cool in that it can be a human as well, because they're just basically small humans, um, perfectly proportioned small humans. So I want like a grizzled veteran type guy. I had a guy with a um, cigar coming out of his mouth hole. This one wouldn't be bad. I'm just going to go with this guy. Boom, boom. It did fit in both. That's fine. Loki. So Loki is a Patra. That's his race. A cat guy. Technomancer. So I'm going to look at my images. Actually, I'm going to go here to Assets and go to Portraits. Type in P-A-H. Patra, there we go. So I'm going to switch to one of these because this is not really a Technomancer E looking person. Um, should we go gray or should we go the other side? Uh, I think I'm going to go with the roll. So. Odd will be number one. Even is number two. Oops, I didn't want to preview. Oh, we're just going to drag him over. Boom. There we go. I don't know that they have tokens for everything. Let's see. They do. I don't like that token, though. I want it to be full face so okay so there's our three we have a technomancer a sold and two soldiers um, that we have made right now now I'm gonna look and see hey atomic and welcome welcome atomic hero squad is here folks I do really appreciate you stopping by. Don't want you to ever think I take it for granted, because I do not. 
So I'm looking for any level ones. I don't think I have any. Um, I've been sort of going, yeah, they're all here. Um, so we're going to check one other place. So this is our available characters. The other thing you can do is import the file. So this, you can see I have a Mika bomber. Uh, this is from my computer. So all these other ones are Maul is a uh, D and D character. All right. So I am thinking about possibly making them level two to give them a little bit more oomph. But then again, it throws in a lot more complexity. Uh, from one to two is a pretty big jump for several of the classes. Uh, they add a bunch more stuff at level two. So for now, I think I'm just going to leave it at level one. Um, maybe if I run it a couple more times, we'll see. So Atomic, uh, I don't know if you're here at the beginning, but I have a campaign. This is, that might be something you be. Uh, we've been toying with the idea, we meaning uh, some of the streamers out there, toying with the idea of me running a, a campaign with Atomic Hero Squad and, and Zinlu and uh, Dan Dazzle, Lock It Down Becky, so, some of the streamers that sort of gravitate to each other's streams and we know each other as much as streamers can know each other at least. And several of them have expressed an interest in Starfinder. And so this is the type, this is exactly what I would run them through. So we're making characters um, for them to pick from. I like to have about 12 to 15 uh, characters for people to choose from. And that way they go, th when they go through, they have a lot of choices, it's not just three. Um, and because there are so many, so take a look at this. Um, let's go to our options and go to our setup. Nope, that's not it. Sidebar, der. Okay. So we definitely need, so we're going we're gonna to start with all, let's start with clear. Don't need encounters. We need characters. We need classes. Not going to do companions. We do need feats. A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. Uh, images, absolutely. Items, yep. Notes. Don't know that we need NPCs, but I'll leave it there anyway. Parcels, races, and spells and themes. Okay. So that's what we need to, to make our new characters. So what I was saying is, if you check out our, the races. So this races is only playable races. These are the playable races you have. D and D has a bunch, but nothing close to this. And like I said, I don't have each um, adventure path that comes out. Each of these that come out, and they come out with I believe two to three a year. Um, it might even be four a year, maybe one a quarter. I don't remember. Um, Every one of these that come out has a new race, like this one has the Efreet. Um, and all the major books that come out have new races. And of course, the Alien Archives have, are full of races. Um, and I don't have four loaded in, in here. Um, so, anyway, this is some of the races that, that we can pick from. So, as, as players. Uh, we have a cat person. Um, let's go with a dog person. Um, I may go with a gray as well. Let's 
Well, let me do a link in here. I'm going to pull down my note. See if it'll let me do a link. It does. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here and just pull some of these races. So let's take a look at some of these um, images. What? Is it with an A? It is with an A, okay. So that's a gray. Your typical quote unquote real alien. Those are grays. Barathu are also cool. We're gonna we're gonna do a Barathu, absolutely. So a Barathu is basically a giant jellyfish. And they use these tentacle-esque growths to uh, hold weapons. And they hover through the air and they just float through the air. They're about six feet long and they hover at about four and a half feet high. Their tentacles are about like three feet long, uh, three, three to four feet long. It's very cool. All right. Um, don't remember what a Bolita is. Oh, yes. Uh, I have a player who is a Bolita right now. They are basically, if you think of uh, roly polies, is what we used to call them. Um, the centipede-esque bugs that if you touch will roll up into a ball. That's what they are. And they can roll up into a ball and roll uh, and also gain armor class. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to And just scroll down to where these are, Bernari. Um, that way you don't have to keep typing them in. Little otter folk. Um, sure, I can try a Bernari. So I only want to do a handful. Next page. So some of them are not that exciting. Um, I mean, they might be good for, uh, dang it, uh, it's like this, you know, they're, they're pretty much human, but gray. So why would I, you know, you can be a human. So why would I want to have, uh, two of the same when there's 150 to choose from? I don't want two of almost the same thing. Magic space otter. Neat. Exactly. Magic space otters are very cool. Um, the Dragon King are the big boys, uh, large creatures, and I don't like having large creatures. Large creatures, see the world is built around medium creatures. Now, if we did an entire campaign and everybody was a large creature, then their ships would be built for large creatures. Where they go would be for, built for large creatures and stuff. So that would make sense. But having this big hulking thing that's 10 feet tall, 12 feet tall, um, can't fit down most hallways, can't fit in most ships, can't sit in the most chairs. Uh, so... There's a little bit different in Starfinder in that there are some things that, because there are large races out there, some places accommodate them. But for the most part, everything is written for medium creatures. Uh, and it just becomes too much of a hassle. You So I found watching podcasts and things that most GMs just hand wave it and just pretend that they're medium so they can move just fine through large creatures. 
also if he's so if you're of a large creature you think well he's probably gonna be the tank the big fighter going in the front well then everybody behind him they can't see especially if he's in a five foot corridor and he's 10 feet trying to squeeze his way through you can't see you can't shoot you can't cast spells past him so he's blocking everybody's view or he's sitting in the back so i like i said there's just so much stuff the same thing but for the opposite reason for the tiny creatures there's a uh eight inch race of plant people and yes it's very cute very cool but by the time you reach sixth level they've got 60 stamina and 50 hit points that's 110 points of damage they can take a six inch creature and they have a speed of 30. So when you have these tiny things, again, they're not realistic. Uh, because they're just, they're, it's like saying this thing can take just as much damage as a human. And I just don't, logically can't correlate that. Um, so, I try to, so I try to steer away as, and again, there are so many other pictures, I mean, so many other races. We don't have to pick ones that, are going to be problematic uh contemplative maybe i don't uh they're cool but i don't think anybody would want to play one um so contemplatives are brains with these tiny little bodies the brain itself is uh, like two and a half three feet and again, they, they hover. And their body is only like 12, uh, 8 to 12 inches. Um, again, they have these, they can use weapons and I think they're, they're, they're very haughty and they have telepathy and things. There's no eyes or nose or mouth. Um, it's just a big brain about uh, stuck onto a tiny little body. So I'm just going through picking the oh, as a butterfly person, yep. Picking the different races that would be easy to 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 uh, jump in with. Um, I know a lot of these are, but not enough uh, to remember exactly off the top of my head. Some of them I don't know at all. Dralek. A Dralek is a big creature. I think it's a bug guy. Yeah. Again, they're they're good, solid characters, but I don't think somebody would just pick it. An empathid is a companion. Gorin are plant people. Uh, let's see. Goran. Oh, that's right. They're mostly human with plant-like best um, ideas. Yeah. Okay. I think I could take a carrot in a fight. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we'll get to them. They're, they're R's. They're in the R's. So we'll get there to them in just a minute. All right. So the itch... Kiri or Ik Ik Akeshtis. That's the Akeshti. That's the one I want. That's the one I want. I'll tell you what I want. I want an Akeshti. So the Akeshtis are pretty cool. They're lizard folks. Akeshti. Wink. Who are small? I mean, uh, they're not small in size, but they're smaller. They're like three and a half feet tall. But one of the things they can do 
among other things, is they can squirt blood out of their eye, and uh, dis which causes the enemy to be distracted, quote unquote, distracted. Um, so the Akestis are pretty cool. Small little race, uh, small little. Uh, Lizard folks, I'm gonna get rid of this thing. There we go. Alright, so that's the Akeshti. The Noir are um, Minotaurs with four horns. Because two horns just wasn't enough. I'm pulling up their picture right now. Here we go. Check this guy out. Boom. Noir. Of course, Onis and Orcs, um, half orc. Dwarves, gnomes, elves, drow. Those are all races you can play. Half I already have a halfling in here. Halflings are so overpowered. Um I think I'll put a reptoid in here just because. Oh here's the Raxolite. Um Patra is the, is the cat person. Let's go over to our peas. P -p 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 peas. Don't remember what a phantomite is. Okay, he's cool. Um, yeah, sure. Somebody might want to play one of those. Let's uh, add him to our list. All right, so the, uh, what's a prug? What? There's no picture of a prug? Oh, I, I, that's a companion. Um, oh, Quarlo. So they are large creatures. Uh, again, a very cool player. I mean, I believe they're large. Uh, this is actually a really good race. It is a medium monster, so huh? yeah, humanoid. Uh, these are actually really good in the sense of what their abilities are. Uh, I just don't see anybody wanting to play one for their first time trying to play a game like this. So here's a Raxolite. Those are our tiny plant people. And they have plus two to intelligence, plus two dex, dex, plus two charisma. Um, Typical rack slide, 16 inches tall. Sorry, uh, I was half half as big. Uh, 16 inches tall and weighs 4 pounds. So you've got this thing, 16 inches tall. And it's supposed to be able to move just as fast as everybody else. Uh, take just as much damage as everybody else. Um, their speed is 30 feet. So if they run... They can go 120 feet in six seconds. I mean, it's just, like I said, it's just so, to me, it's, um, a little too far over the line to be believable. Now, if they had, like, half the hit points of everybody else, um, or even a third, you know, uh, t yeah, it's fast, um, it's just crazy. I just don't see it. Um, 
any stiff wind would knock them down. Uh, it just, you know, how are they supposed to pilot a ship? How are they? Now, again, if you had just, you could do a campaign, I would be definitely up for doing a campaign with just Raxolite. The whole party are Raxolites, uh, the two different kinds, um, or other tiny creatures, so that the whole ship is built for Raxolites uh, and things like that. And those things coming out of them supposedly help them, allow them to use tools and stuff. Uh, but this gun was not built for him. It's just a found gun, and there's no way it's that small. And if it is, that little tiny projectile is bigger than a... I mean, the whole gun itself is as large as a bullet. So if you're using projectile weapons or instead of laser weapons or things, I mean, it just... They would do should do less damage. It just, to me, pushes the limits too far. Enough with the reptiles. But they're very popular. A lot of people like them a lot. So, reptoids. So what do you think they're atomic? Do you think anybody would want to play a reptoid? Cool thing about these guys, so in today's society, America, and I guess throughout the world as well, these are believed to exist. There's there's a belief that reptilian aliens are here, uh, disguised as humans. Everyone likes lizards. Well, we have Vesk. So if you want to be a lizard, then Vesk is the way to go, and I'm definitely going to put a Vesk in there. Uh, but these guys are shape changers. So if you've seen, uh, there was an old, old uh, movie, TV series back when they were doing miniseries called V, and they had these repto reptoids, um, alien reptoids, uh, and there were certain ways that you could detect which per person walking around the street was a reptoid. Um, and they would take off their mask and they would be a reptoid. Anyway, so sure, we'll make a... They live in the Earth. George Bush may be one exactly. Yep, exactly what these are. So I'll go ahead and put a reptoid on here in my list. Uh, it's a little bit overpowered in the fact that they can change their shape. But for the small little introduction thing I'm doing, uh, if I have a good role player... Or even a bad role player. It's not going to change the storyline too much. Alright. Um, Rhyphorian. Sounds familiar. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Sarcasian. Oh, these are large creatures. That Angels that can fly through space with these wings. Sazorian. Don't remember what a Sazorian is. Ah, another large creature with hands for hooves and his front paws. The Shakalta. I don't remember the Shakalta. Let's see. Species of highly intuitive psychic entities. They're born as a soul, appearing as a mate, moat of glowing energy, with a vague face and fully developed mind. So they have a lot of different stuff that they can do. Dual-bodied bonded souls. So again, this is uh, not something I want to expose a brand new player who doesn't know what they're doing to. Shimreen. So Shimreen are crystal people. We have one in my Sunday night games. I think I'll put a Shimreen in here. Be fun. They can change their hands into tools slash weapons. So you see here, she's got a big jagged knife. Stabby, stabby. And slashy, slashy. 
the Shabbat. I don't remember where the Shabbat is. Sheeran are, are one of the starting races. Sheerans look like this. Bug people. Skitter Manor is the other one that everybody loves because they're so cute. Um, six, they have six hands and two feet. Uh, and they're very small, furry. They're like the size of a large teddy bear. Um, and they're, they're supposed to be very flighty. They don't focus on a lot of things. When the Vesk came to capture their the Vesk are these big lizard people and they came and they and they took over planet after planet conquering them. They're a lot like Klingons. And they arrived at the Skidamander planet and said, okay, we're here to take over. And Skidamander's like, okay. And went on about their business. Let them take over and moved on. They didn't care. All right, um, and the Vesk were rather confused. Spathane. So the Spathane, again, really cool character concept for a more experienced player. This is a colony of bugs. Yep, with a hive mind that forms itself into whatever shape it wants to. Um, that's what the Spathane do. And they, uh, Tashtari, they, my group ran into one in our Sunday night game. And they promptly killed it. How did I miss the Spathne? Oh, this is Bathne. Dur. I'm at Tashtari. Um, Tashtare. This is a companion. It's not a playable race. Just saying. Talia or Turtle People. Turtles in a half shell. Tell ya. I tell ya what. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, what size are they? I don't know that anybody would want to play a Ninja Turtle. But then again, they might. Uh, they are medium. They don't look too crazy. They have a base speed of 25 feet and a swim speed of 20 feet. Okay, they should be faster in the water than they are on land, but just saying. Um, okay, I'll put Atelia in, in the group. If somebody wants to play a turtle man, who am I to judge? Tiefling, let's see what the Sakasa is. Okay, it's a companion. Trox, I'm thinking large creature. Sounds vaguely familiar. Yes, large creatures. Uplifted bear. Again, a large creature. Urog. Urog sounds familiar. Why do I know what an Urog is? I don't know. Okay. Barkalak. Barkalak. This looks like an angry person in need of a haircut. Alright, here's our Vesk.
cool looking uh, lizard people. Definitely want one of those. Boink. Flaka. Ah, there we go. There's our wolf people. Dog people. Vlaka, vlaka, vlaka. We have some nice pictures of the vlakas. All right, we're getting close to the end here. Vorak, I don't remember Vorak. Uh, that's because it's a companion. Okay, which we are cool. But again, um, hey, Japing Gaming TV, thank you so much, man. I appreciate the lurk very much. Oh, I hope your day's going well. And if Starfinder is something you're interested in, Feel free to stop by later. Check the YouTubes. The U's and the tubes. Just search for Spencer77. All right. Which weird walloped? Walloped. Oh, that's a companion. Rick Rick Ricci, our insect people. Yaka Yasagaja. I don't know what a Yasagaja is. It's a companion. And an Isoki. So you have to have a Isoki. So Isoki, you guys if anybody who's heard about um Starfinder He's the icon, the icon. So Pathfinder and Starfinder, Pathfinder 2, I presume, um, have what's called iconic characters, the, the iconics, uh, and they're featured in their art. So pretty much any book that they have, uh, any big fight scenes that they have, they have the iconic characters. And they all have names and classes and races and stuff. So this Yosoki mechanic is one of the iconics. He's in a lot of the art. Here, that's the one I was looking for. So there's a pair of Yusuke. If you think of Rocket Raccoon, it is almost exactly Rocket Raccoon. Um, they're smaller, but the size of Rocket Raccoon, two and a half to four feet, I mean, three feet. Uh, very good naturally uh, engineers and they also are naturally stealthy um, so that is a Yosoki all right so we've got our list here we have 12 to choose from um, so let's go ahead and start this process by going with a 12 sider 8 All right so we're going to go with our shimreen so our shimreen are our our crystal people there we go so I have my cheat sheet here. Let's get to actually making the characters. So that's what everybody came for here. Um, we're 45 minutes in. Um, let's build a character. Go to your character selection, a couple different ways. You can click on a plus to add an item or right click, create item. Open her up. And I have my cheat sheet here. So what I've been doing is uh, in my characters, see if I can get to it. I 
I need to move all these over anyway because I have to access these. Uh, boom. All right, so I don't have, so what I'm going to do now is fix these. Let me open up all three of these. And it's going to be, um, he is a bombardier soldier. Soldier Bombardier. Loki is a Technomancer. Amika is a Soldier. What flavor soldier did she pick? She picked Hit and Run. Is that a Blitz? Pretty sure it's Blitz. Or is it called Hit and Run? Let's see. Oh, it's Hit and Run, okay. Soldier, Hit and Run. So this way, as they're looking at the, the people, they can, uh, so that's what her name is going to be. Her name is going to be Chris Tall or Tal. Um, all right, so Atomic, if you're still there, any ideas for classes? We'll get to those in a second. Here are your classes to choose from. Crystal. All right, so her race is going to be Shimreen. And if you don't, I mean, you don't need to know all the classes on what they do, but um, it's rug, yeah. Do you want her to, to be a melee person or a magic person? We'll start with that way. Melee or magic? Shimreen. Boink. So you can see as you add things, it populates, um, he likes melee. Good. So as you add things, it tells you what they got in your chat. Um, so she gets radiant, shift limb, speed, amplify, electricity resistance. She gets all these things. Um, So now we've added the race, we go to the theme and do her ability scores. Melee is great for Shimmering because like I said, they can shape their, so no matter, even if they're unarmed, somebody takes all their weapons or they're captive. It's very hard to uh, keep a Shimmering captive because they can change the their shape. So if you put manacles on them. Once you turn your back, they just reshape it and take it off. Think of the Terminator 2. Who is liquid metal and good shape change. She can do the same thing, but with crystal. Alright, so we do her theme. So her background, let's see. So if she's going to be a melee person, I think we're going to stick with soldier. Now again, we don't have to come up with these elaborate backstories for all these people. Um, that's up to the player. Again, this is just for one shot. You're going to grab the character, skim through it, and go. Um, so I'm just going to go with, uh, I like the law officer idea. Let me just double check what it does. 
It gives you wisdom. Um, don't really need wisdom. Let's go with something different then. Let's go with... Uh, Could always go with guard. Let's go with guard. Gives you a strength. Plus one to our strength, okay? So we'll add guard to her. So that means she was a guard, a hired guard, uh, before she decided to be, join the Starfinders. And now we do our, our class. So um, the two melee ones are Solarian and Soldier. Again, this is just an introduction to Starfinder. Solarian is really cool, very neat, but it takes a lot to do. Uh, you're, you're powering yourself up for the first three rounds, going into different modes, um, tapping into either photon or graviton modes and things so there's a lot to it it's not really crazy um, and if you wanted to take a character and do that for a long time then it would definitely it's definitely worth doing it's a lot of fun but for what we're doing here the whole goal of what we're doing here we're just going to stick with soldier just want to make sure operative also works really well The operatives have special things they can do too, like a sneak attack. That's called a trick attack. I think I'm going to stick with a soldier for her. Just be simple, straightforward. Boom, boom, boom. Key ability is going to be strength. And now we do our uh, apply the class, the abilities, and I mean, uh, I forgot to do this, the scores. All right, so Starfinder in one sense is rather easy when it comes to creating characters. You don't roll dice, there's no randomness to it. You have 10 points to add to your stats, period. That's all there is to it. Um, there used to be a way to open this up. Do we not open this up anymore? Guess not. All right, so we have 10 points. As you can see, we're already looking really good. So we have 11, 12, 10, 12, 8, 10. I personally hate having negatives. So we're going to use our first two points in Wisdom. Oops. I don't know what happened there. All right, so wisdom, gonna be 10. Okay. So as a fighter, con is always good. Strength is always good. Um, so we're gonna add, you want your scores to be even because you can see there's no bonus, and there's no difference between 10 or 11. But 12, we get a plus one. So let's add an odd amount here. We'll add five to her strength to give her 16. So that's, <coughs> we're now down to seven. We've used up seven, so we have three points left. So we want, Two more in con, at least. Still want a little bit of dex. Because <coughs> you're going to be shooting things. Um, so the, the last point will be in, will be in dex. Alright, five, two, seven... 
2 is 9, 1 is 10. Awesome. So there's our stats. Not a bad first level character. We apply our class and abilities. So let me double check. I think, I don't remember if the level two is where you pick your fighting style or if it's level one. Soldier, open right up to it. Yay. All right, so it is level one where you pick a fighting style. All right, so for her, I like the idea of a blitz person, very fast, zip in, zip out. Um, although she was a guard, so I think I'm just going to go with guard. Uh, you become adept at wearing armor, protecting against attacks and enduring damage. Focuses on defense. All right, so we'll just be a guard. Nice, quick, and easy. So you jump over to abilities, primary fighting style, guard. She has no spells. Um, skill ranks. So now you go to her skills. What is her intelligence? So intelligence is 12, so she'll be getting at least one more every level, so that's nice. Uh, so what it, what it is, is unlike D&D, &D, where you're proficient in certain skills, Starfinder, you're proficient in whatever you're trained at. And of course, just like D&D, &D, you can also have feats, they give you that. But every level you rank, um, every level gives you so many points that you can spend in your skills. So she gets five per level. The more intelligence you have, the more you get every level. And then it's also based on your class. So like operatives get eight plus their their uh, intelligence. Soldiers get four plus their intelligence. So for her, we're going to do athletics. You can only have so many ranks equal to your level. So real quick, because she is trained in it, as soon as she puts a point in into it, she gets her training bonus of plus three. So one plus her training bonus of three is four, plus her strength is three, that gives her seven. But charisma, she's not, it's not a soldier thing. She doesn't have training in it. Um, so if she adds one in that, it just comes straight across as one because she has no charisma, she has no training bonus. Whereas Intimidate, she does have training in it, so that's a plus four because she's trained as a guard and soldier to be. Um, to intimidate people. All right, so we're going to give them medicine. A good guard knows how to uh, patch up people. Survival, piloting, intimidate, engineering, athletics, and acrobatics. Um, we'll give it one in acrobatics. Why not? And then you don't have to have training in it to in order to train in something. So culture is always good. So I'm going to give her culture and at least one more to spend. Um, could go piloting or we could go survival. I think I'm going to go with survival. Um, actually, no, we'll go intimidate. We'll go intimidate. Why not? Just give her a little plus one. 
I mean a little plus four. Boom. All right, so those are the bonuses there. I mean, those are her skills. She, she gets a feat. Her equipment and her language. Um, so let's go with look at the feats. Looking at her skills, knowing she's a guard. Come on. I think I'm going to give her an attack feat. Um, blind fight's good. Um, allows her to fight when she's blind. Let's go with, um, let's see. Take a look at her main, so her reflex, will, and fortitude. I, want, I think I'm going to give her better reflexes as a guard, either that or, or perception. Do we want to make her be able to see better? Uh, she doesn't have, all right, so we're, we're going to take away the, uh, as a guard, she definitely wants to be trained in perception. So I'm going to give her the, uh, the feat of... A skill something let me look she's going to be trained in skill focus let's see is that it choose a skill gain plus three bonus to checks involving the chosen skill um where's the, what's the other one skill synergy choose two skills these skills become class skills for you All right, so that'll let her learn. So I'm going to do skill synergy, and that will give her um, culture. And perception. So we go to our her abilities, and we go feet, drop, skill synergy. Culture, perception. I would think as a guard, you need to know what's going on in a culture, what's the correct, um, how to behave around certain people, that type of thing. And then, so we give her, switch this skill from here to Acrobatics, get rid of acrobatics. So she's good at athletics. So she can, as a guard, she's good physically. She knows how to behave. She knows how to intimidate people as a guard. She knows how to give medicine, CPR, patch people up, and perception. She's very perceptive. Cool. So that's good. I like it. So we have her feet, equipment, and languages. So I do, I'm do. i going to go back just for a moment. First of all, we're going to put in what she is. She is a soldier guard. So what you do is when you add these things, uh, so typically what I do is I wait till I'm done. So I've got her feet, I've got everything I needed except for her equipment and her languages. So um, now I go back through, I go to that abilities page and I open up all of these things. Um, so boom, I already did the feet. I don't need to worry about that.
and then I go to the actions page and I would add on all the different actions that these different things give her. Um, so some of them, for example, shift limb would just be a note in the combat tracker saying you can do this. Uh, some of them are going to be actual commands to where you click a button and it gives you a bonus or it does damage to somebody or does something. Um, and the way you do that, uh, and I've covered this a lot of times before, but you right click, you go to, let's see, this one is weapon. So this is not, uh, no, we're not adding a weapon. So we're opening up a whole new section. Uh, this is going to be race one, two, three, four. So she has four. Number of sections is four. Now <coughs> I can always delete them later if I need to. Uh, this is has nothing to do with her class, so it just has to do with character, class level one. Um, there is no base difficulty check, and there is no ability. When you're changing these, uh, these can be, we'll, we'll be doing this for a soldier, for example, and then in that case, we'll be using strength. All right, so the first one is Where'd it go? Right, um, shift limb. That's the one we had first. Okay, so it's actually going to be the last one because I'm doing them in alphabetical order because I'm that guy. Shift limb. Then you go right click on it, <laughs> and delete it. Or we can add a spell. Um, shift limb. Transform hands. Now we go over here to the plus, and that opens it up. And we fill this in. So the source. go back to your races, go to Shimreen, Iron Alien Archive 3. Alien Archive 3. Class is irrelevant. The feature is a racial trait. Level is irrelevant. Open this up. Highlight it, control C, control V, close it. So now it is both here on her page, actions page, and it's also on her uh, abilities page. But here she's skimming through her actions. All she has to do is click here and it'll tell her, open this up and she'll be able to read it. So I'm going to put shift limb and I'm going to put passive next to it so that, uh, actually, well, never mind. I'm not going to put passive because she does have to ask, sort of activate it. Um, so as a swift action, she can transform one of her hands into a natural weapon that deals piercing damage. While transformed, this hand can't be used to hold or use anything, and the shimmering can reverse the transformation as a swift action. Um, so transform hands, this gives you the definition. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, add an action, add an effect. This is not target, this is self. And it's going to be shift limb. 
semicolon. Actually, I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, actually, because these are brand new players, I'm going to put a swift action. Normally, I wouldn't spell it out like that because if the player would know it's a swift action once they play it a couple times, but they've never played it before. So we're going to leave it like this. And all that does is it you then click the effect and it'll add it to the combat tracker just as those words will show up there. Boom. Swift. Shift limb is a swift action. And it just reminds them, the player, as they have their looking at uh, a fight, what they can do. And the last thing we do with this is we go up here to, so this is done. We can close it. We go here to add weapon. The name is. I'm going to say crystal hand. Um, now, the person, depending on the person, you know, they can change to crystal axe, crystal sword, spikes, um, a bunch of things, uh, whatever they want to do. And so now I'm going to. Look up in my ass my library real quick. Do I have any archive three here? I do. Okay, never mind. Since it gives me a page number, it's a lot quicker and easier. You could look it up in your library, the reference manual, and just go to natural weapons as well. It does the same thing. Um, all right, so natural weapons says. 1d3 lethal damage, and they gain a weapon specialization to add one and one half the character load to their damage. So this would be piercing damage. It says it right there. There's piercing damage. So you come here, you go to open it up, property. I don't think this is a property, but I'm going to put natural just in case. Um, so it's 1d3. Uh, so that's her stat is strength. We go to, so she doesn't get a bonus. She is proficient in it. Uh, she is specialized in it. Oh no, she's not special. She'll get that at level three. Um, and then we're gonna add the damage. And we're going to make it 1d4. So I don't remember how to do 1d3 right now. And actually, let's see if I can add it in here. Clear this out. Let's see if it will let me um, drag it on there. Nope. Okay. There is a way. I just don't remember. And, it's, and one more point of damage I'm not worried about. Uh, she does get a bonus. She gets multiplied by strength. Yep. And her bonus is right now it's one because of her, her thing. Type is piercing. So 
So because of her strength, she gets plus four to her attack. Boom. And she does 1d4 plus 4 damage. With her crystal hand. And so that's what you would do with the rest of these. Uh, you just go through, you read it, you sh see what it does. Her energy resistance would be something that you would code into the effects. Um, and you can do that for all of them. Uh, what I typically do with this is I ask, as I have time, I'll go through and I'll fill in these characters and I'll do all that. Otherwise, I'll uh, if I don't have the time, I'll build them like this and then ask the, the players beforehand, okay, here's this, your choices. Here's your list of 12, 15 people who wants to play what. Um, they'll tell me and then I can go in and do all this stuff because it takes about an hour to go in and code everything properly. You don't need to do that to play the game. So if you're just starting and you just want to get together with a group of your friends and play, you can roll up your characters and go. Uh, it doesn't take that long. I mean, you don't have to code everything like I do. Um, and I do it for my players. As a player myself, I've had I've been a player twice now. I will go in and I will code everything for my own character as well. All right, so getting back to this, let's see, boink boink. Um, so the last thing I want to do is I'm going to add her equipment, inventory, parcels. Uh, I want to see if I put in, I, I had a new person. I thought I had made a new person parcel, but I guess I didn't. Um, so let's do that now. Create item. Where did it go? There it is. Okay, I don't know why it didn't show up. Okay. New character. So everybody starts with the same with a thousand gold, a thousand credits. Um, items. Second skin is pretty much the best. Armor you can buy f for at level one. It costs 250, so that's 750 left. And then it's just a matter of what type of weapon they want. Healing. Serum of Healing Mark 1 is also 50 credits, so that's 700. I like to start off everybody with a hygiene kit. What? Did I misspell it? I guess I did. I forget how much of frag grenades are. They cost 35. Yes, we'll do a frag grenade. Grenades are quick and easy to use. 35. Um, and then we're going to do the weapon. So a pulse caster pistol is very... Common. Uh, and then we'll do a 
melee weapon of a baton. Tactical baton. And then the last thing I want them to have is a uh, actually I think we're gonna leave it that way. Oh, the battery. They gotta have an extra battery. I think these are twenty. Oh, they're sixty, okay. So put them at I'm gonna give them two batteries. Eh, I'm gonna leave them with one battery. 290, boom, there we go. All right, so now we have this parcel. And so all you do with a parcel, we'll lock it, is you take the, the parcel and you drag it into their inventory. And they have everything. So now as I make these characters, I'll just drop this in there. Boom, they're good to go. Make sure everything is equipped like it should be. So now when you go to her actions page, you see she has the baton. She has the, the frag grenade and a pulse caster crystal. Okay. This should not be a range. So she has, there we go, frag grenade, it uses a range of, yes, one, good, 30, 20, perfect. All right, so yeah, so those, all those are, are good to go. She has her equipment, languages, we will go to, so her intelligence is one. You always start off with your race, home planet, then, your intelligence mod, so in her case it's one. Then your culture ranks, not total, but ranks. So she has one. So she has four languages that she knows. You go to notes. Yes. So she is Shimreen. So that should be a language. Let's go check. It is not. Okay, so we're going to um, so as a dungeon master, I can go to game master, I go to options, I go to languages, and I go to Shimreen. I'm going to go down here, go to uh, this. Okay, so it was just hidden. Make this bigger. Come on. Now pick one of these to make to for what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to start with Valmeric. Who knows what that is? Um, so now we go to plus. Go to Shimmering. Her home world. Um, let's see. What does it say? Where race they're from? Or where, where they're from? The world of Shimrin, Shimrin Sara, deep in the vast. It's constantly plagued by violent storms, but seven glittering stone cities protrude through the tempestual clouds. These metropolises stand as a testament to the perseverance and resourcefulness of the planet's notable inhabitants. The crystal humanoids known as Shimrin. All right, so the race is from there um, to give her another language i'm going to give her make her be from akaton 
So her language here is also Akaton. Is this Akatonian or Akaton? Akatonian, okay. And she has two more languages to learn. So we're going to say, as a soldier, uh, I'm going to say she hung out with a lot of Vesk. So she knows Vesk. And then the Sheeran are pretty popular throughout look and see if there's anything else that really hits me. Yeah, so we'll go with Sheeran. All right, so those are the four languages she knows. Um, say she's female. So if you look at the race, and then you go down to the bottom. Okay. Uh, in D and D, they have size and stuff like that. So. Um, One thing, here we go. Shemines are composed of glimmering crystal, and the average shemine is 7 feet tall and weighs 600 pounds. All right, so she's going to be a little bit taller than average. We're going to say 7 foot 2 inches, and she's going to be a little bit bigger than normal, so we're going to say 650 pounds. All right. Um, and we're going to say that her age, we're going to put her at 20. Um, and uh, I'm going to, can I, this is read only. All right, so I'm going to say, her tall, angular body. Eh, never mind. I'm just gonna leave it blank. I'll I'll read, have her read it, and she can pick the the color that whatever they play because they glow from within. So what color she is, what she color she glows. So we'll do all that when you get there. All right. So let's go to the portrait. Easiest way to do that is go to your assets, type in your, go to. Uh, We'll see if they have a token first. She does. All right, that's not too bad. It's not too far away. Boink, there's a token. Now we go to portrait. What? There's no portrait for a shimmering? Really? Interesting. All right, so we'll go back to this. Uh, we'll just click and drag this over. Boom. All right. Good to go. So she's set. She has everything she needs to start playing right now. Like I said, I personally go in and I code everything, but it's not necessary to play. She has everything she needs. She can click on this character and go. Um, Typically, I would be doing this with a player. I try to do this one at a time beforehand if I'm starting a brand new campaign. Rolling up a character in Starfinder takes about an hour. Uh, unless you know what you're doing, then it, it still takes about 45 minutes. Um, I've done it in as fast as, say, 20 minutes um, when I'm doing some things like this if I know because I have an idea of what I'm doing, I know the race, I know the class, I know 
how to build them correctly with the stat points. Um, having a little cheat sheet is nice where uh, in my notes, it just going doing it in that order makes it is the smoothest way I've found to do it. Um, you can so race, theme, class, ability scores, ranks. Uh, that's typically the easiest way to do it. Um, so if you have any other questions, feel free. We'll go ahead and remove Shimmerine from here because we done, oops, it's locked, that's why. Because we done did do it. So one step closer to when uh, uh, running a campaign like this for new players. Thank you so much for hanging out. Um, I spent a lot of time looking at pictures and stuff at, beforehand. Um, I may do this again next week. It depends on how far my characters progress on Sunday. So keep an eye out um, and look in the, the description of the show for what I what each one covers. Um, but if this is something that you think was interesting, if you have any ideas, any races or classes you want to see me build, or if you want to see me code, uh, I'm, I am going to be doing that as well, going back through these characters that I've made, finishing up the coding for them. Um, I'll be putting that up here as well. But if you have any particular questions or comments, leave them. Um, I always respond to the comments that, that I get. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Watch, check out my twitch.tv slash Spencer77 to see when I'm streaming. Uh, and, and you can see what games I'm streaming and check them out live or go to YouTube, look at my playlist. But whatever else you do, enjoy the rest of your day.